Hi there. Quite a few AS micro students with a new syllabus have to understand some of the dynamics of monopoly power in markets. So this is a short video looking at some of the, some of the aspects of monopoly, in particular the nature of monopolistic control in markets, monopoly power, and how we measure the degree of market power. So monopoly power uh, depends obviously on the scale of monopoly. Uh, we make a distinction between a pure monopolist where there is literally just one firm in the market, the, the firm is the industry, there's a single seller, they have 100% of the market. Of course, it's very rare for there to be a pure monopoly. Uh, perhaps the closest we get is something like the London Underground, uh, perhaps Google and web search in the UK, nearly 90% market share. Of course, a lot depends on how you define the market. So London Underground has a monopoly of underground travel, but many ways of getting around the city. A working monopoly is a firm defined as a firm, a business with any with greater than 25% of market sales. And there are lots of industries where firms have built up a, a market share in excess of 25%. <clears throat> but I mean, there's still competition in the market, but they have a working monopoly position. Uh, there's actually a technical definition of, of, of a firm which is a dominant firm, and that's a business that has more than 40% of the market. Uh, you may have come across the, the, the concept of an oligopoly. An oligopoly is a market where there are a few dominant firms, significant, powerful businesses, each with lots of market power, uh, where the battle for market share is a key objective. Uh, an oligopoly may have many firms, but it's a, a market dominated by a few. If we go one stage further, uh, in a duopoly, two firms take the lion's share or the majority of market demand. And the best example of that is probably something like Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Here's an example of a, of a market where there are some dominant players, but no one firm has a working monopoly. This is the market share for, for motor fuel, petrol forecourts and things, in the UK in 2015. In fact, Tesco is now the leading petrol retailer in the UK, it's ahead of BP, ahead of Shell, ahead of Esso. And you notice there that uh, Sainsbury's and Morrison's and Asda are right up there as well. The supermarkets have increasingly gained ground in the UK petrol retail market. Uh, one of the uh, long-term characteristics of this industry has been the decline in the number of petrol stations in the UK, uh, from 13,000 in 2000 to less than 9,000 now. And indeed, many of the uh, much of the fall has been to do with the closure of uh, smaller, often independent petrol retailers who can't compete with the big oil companies and certainly can't compete with the price of independent uh, of uh, supermarkets. Here's a diagram showing monopoly power for Coca-Cola, a remarkably constant market share over the last 10 years, through to 2014. Coca-Cola have a, a, around a 40-45% market share in the United States. That is quite remarkable. And Nike is another good example of a business which effectively has a near monopoly, if, if we define the market as the market for basketball shoes. Uh, they had more than 90% of total market sales in 2013. Some pretty big businesses are a long way behind, Adidas, Reebok, and of course the fast-growing Under Armour. Here's a good example again of a near monopoly. Google has, uh, well, a year ago, had uh, over 92% of market share in the search engine market in the UK. That has now dipped below 90% since, and uh, Google, of course, is involved in sort of long-running um, discussions, shall we call them, with the European Competition Commission about the dominance of the market. Here's an example of an oligopoly. The data is from 2013, but it's a good example of how a market can be dominated by uh, just a handful of firms. So the UK cinema market is best described as an oligopoly. Sydney World, Odeon and View together take a lion's share of the market. This will be a classic multiple choice question, wouldn't it? We have to you have to work out the, the three firm or the five firm concentration ratio. Well, together, those three firms take uh, well over 70% of the market. So how can monopoly power grow? Well, monopoly comes from the successful growth organically of a business, in other words, the internal growth of a business, or also oftentimes through merger and acquisition. That's also known as integration of firms. Horizontal integration is where two firms come together at the same stage of production in the same single industry. Two car makers may decide to merge, or two banks may decide to uh, to come together. And of course, that can lead to a fast growth of market share and monopoly power. Vertical integration 
is where a firm integrates with another business at a different stage of production. You can either go forward where you merge with another business which is closer to the final consumer in the supply chain or you can go backward where a firm merges with another business but at a previous stage of the supply chain. Check out our topic videos on forward and backward vertical integration to give you some more examples there. Now one of the key aspects of monopoly power is that once you have built up a market position uh, monopolies are able to protect their monopoly power, their, their market power, if you like, through what's called barriers to entry or entry barriers. Entry barriers are designed to block a rival firm from entering a market profitably. And if they're successful, they help uh, keep the level of monopoly profit quite high and therefore increase producer surplus, a concept you should be familiar with, hopefully, as part of your AS micro. Uh, when barriers to entry are quite high, the market is less... Uh, contestable, it's less competitive, and well-established businesses can can become almost a permanent feature of the market. Now, in contrast, as we'll see in, a, in extra topic videos, in competitive markets where there's less concentrated uh, market power, the barriers to entry are pretty low, and new businesses can and often do come and go quite easily, uh, driven by the profit motive. What are the main, what are the main barriers to entry in the market? Well. Uh, economies of scale are important in, in getting the long-term unit cost down for big businesses. Uh, vertical integration gives businesses control over the supply chain. Uh, monopolies may have control of important technologies, for example, through patents. And they may establish significant con consumer or brand loyalty, which makes it harder for new firms to come in. Big businesses can also grow their expertise and their reputation and build up consumer goodwill. They may also have some legal, as we've mentioned, actually some legal protection in the market through patents. So this is a key, key aspect of monopoly, that in a monopolistic market, existing businesses, well-established, sizable businesses, can achieve barriers to entry. So there we go. This is just a brief introduction to the aspects of monopoly power in markets as part of your AS Micro.